Once in your lifetime, you will experience something that changes your life, that makes you see the world in a whole new light. That time is now. Going for a ride through the countryside. Gonna get a ride on his backside. Gonna be a tough ass, but he'll be up to the task. He'll have to ride real fast. He's gonna get a sore ass. After mastering Kojin Up's toilet rules, I'm able to continue with my quest, passing by Carol Up, being careful of drop sheep, which drop from the trees onto the road to disturb weary travelers. But soon I've reached another K Town. K is also for Katanning. Katanning is one of the largest towns in the Great Southern. It was built in 742 BC by Chinese Imperial forces that got a bit lost on an expedition. After being abandoned, it fell to ruin before being overtaken by the evil dictator Saddam Pissi, who had a mansion built by slaves from the nearby nunnery. Pissi fled after UN intervention and was eventually captured hiding in a bunker under this rock. He was tried and convicted on charges of war crimes and three unpaid parking tickets. But since those days, Katanning has become much like any other town. Although surrounded by farmland, it is sign writing that is the powerhouse of the local economy. For visitors, the Shire says that the flour mill, mosque, tar yard, town clock and rose gardens are all points of interest, but they aren't even slightly interesting. And although the murals are so lifelike that they seem to come out of the wall, the greatest part of Katanning is the all-ages playground. Though the mini railway only runs on the 8th Sunday of every month, anyone can come down any day of the week to ride the giant slides which make other playgrounds look like child's play. The spiral slide goes up 8 stories and people have been known to experience forces of up to 6 Gs while going down. But that isn't the biggest slide. No, Big Bertha is the pride of the playground, 43 tons of pure steel alloy. Wind gusts of up to 200 knots at the top make it sway like a hippie at a Grateful Dead concert. Uh, I think I better go around that bit. Here it goes. Oh, come on, I didn't even make it to the end. But after a quick visit to the petting zoo, it's time to head north. My first stop is Maracunda, which features a church, but not much else. Next is Wooden Milling, which features an archery park, and apparently some other stuff, but I don't have time for that because I'm aiming for a small locality in this area. L is for Lime Lake. Well, these parts are fairly dry in WA, so the word lake is actually used rather loosely. Now to reach the lake itself, I would have to climb this fence, but as this is technically trespassing, don't tell anyone I'm doing it. This is the infamous Lime Lake. To be honest, this is a bit of a hole. Just up the road is Parker Yering Lake, a real salt lake formed in 1992 when a media struck the area, scaring many sheep. Scientists who explored the crater reported no intelligent life at the crash site or in the neighbouring town of Weijin. Weijin has two major attractions, the giant ram, and is also known for its $3 million army training facility. Let me run you through it. First we climb up here. Ooh, pretty scary, pretty steep. And it's under this platform here. This is the watchtower where you look out for enemy soldiers. It's down a big step. And you've got to go across this little thing. I don't know what it's called, but it's pretty tough. And there's a big jump across to here. And you've got to play a little game, noughts and crosses. Yep. Oh, yep. Hey, hey, yep. Score! Run right across there, see? Woo! I win! Oh, I don't want to go down another one of these. There's three little sheep. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Big jump down there, don't want to go down there. That's blocked off, only one way to go. It's down this way. Whee! <laughs> well, that's it. That's how you join the army. 
Unfortunately, just outside of Weijin, I had a mechanical incident and had to call my support crew. Four hours later, my mummy came and picked me up. But after two days relaxation and woke up with my dedicated mechanics working furiously on my bike, I called in a favour from a wealthy personal friend of mine who flew me by private jet out to here. L is also for Lake Grace. Lake Grace was originally named Round the Sheeper, but in 1936 it was renamed after a nurse, Grace Lake, who served for 65 years at the local hospital. The original hospital still stands with a commemorative and informative path leading up to it, detailing Nurse Lake's achievements. She was well known for moonwalking between patients, and in homage to this skill, her name formed the basis of the town's new moniker. Just outside of town is a body of water coincidentally called Lake Grace. The lake is of long historical importance as summed up by this sign. Lake Grace locals pride themselves on friendliness to visitors, but not once did any of them wave to me. So like this train, I'm making tracks. I head west, passing through Taran Rock and into Kukurin, a town overrun by giant skeleton yabbies, some of which are known to eat humans. Fortunately, the people of Kukurin make up for this by being very friendly, and much more willing to wave as they drive past. Just as I was leaving, I came across this poor sheep. After soothing the beast, I used my strength and ingenuity to release the now tame animal. Look at him go, running with gratitude back to the flock. Farewell, little friend. Farewell. But it's onwards with the alphabet. M is for Mu Yining. With its heyday now long gone, Mu Yining clings to its past such as the old school, which has been refurbished despite no longer being in use. The Mu Yining Hall is still used, although it's kind of hard to tell. But the main feature of Mu Yining is the wheat bin. Let me guide you through. This is the office in which you make deals with foreign dictators. This is the Weybridge, used to weigh the trucks from the trucking company that is a front for bribes. These screens are designed to block the sight of the shady doings within. No grain here. This conveyor belt carries all the money that is to be funneled into an offshore bank account. Finally, this is where you burn the evidence of all transactions. It also doubles as a barbecue for any animals you catch while hunting in the nearby bush. Sadly, that concludes another episode. As I shred up the Mool Yining BMX track, I leave you with footage of some of the wildlife I've encountered during my travels. Cheerio, and remember, never split a bill with Rosie O'Donnell. Nora Sam Production, sponsored by the Wake Up Tuesday Commission.